here on the PBA Tour. Pete Weber dazzled and amazed us all. So after a 299 game, what more could possibly be in store here this week? Tonight, live from the suburbs of Detroit, the automotive capital of the world, and a place where Lord Stanley's Cup is constantly a goal. It's the Greater Detroit Open. In our first match, Hall of Famer and all-time leading money winner, Walter Ray Williams Jr. goes for his 34th career title. He'll face the hard-throwing Robert Smith, a two-time PBA champion. That winner moves on into the semifinals to face Chris Barnes, a four-time Team USA member in his amateur days and now a three-time PBA champion. In the other semifinal matchup, it's the Southpaw, Patrick Allen, looking for his first career title. But the hard-throwing Jason Hurd stands in his way here on ESPN at the Greater Detroit Open. Detroit, Michigan, Hockey Town, USA, where they adore their beloved Red Wings. The Lions, though, are off to that 0-5 beginning, still looking for that elusive first victory. But the big winners here this week, the membership of the PBA Tour, where they've rolled once again here to Taylor Lanes, one of their favorite venues, and where Hall of Famer Pete Weber won for the very first time back in 1985. Hi again, everybody. Your humble bowling announcer here with my tag team partner, Randy Peterson. For our final field of five tonight, you've got about as broad a diverse spectrum of five bowlers as you could possibly hope for. We've got two proven champions. We've got one left-hander and a couple of power bowlers as well. Power bowlers would be Jason Hurd and Robert Smith. Those would be crankers. Very good, Jim. Big power balls. They play the deep inside <laughs> angle. When their balls hit the pins, there's nothing but shrapnel left. Then there's Patrick Allen. He, of course, would be a tweener. He is a tweener. Doesn't throw the big hook, but he doesn't throw it straight either. He's right in between. I like to call him the beast from the east. Used to be a great action player. He's really thriving in this new format. Brings me to Walter Ray Williams, Jr. I think that'd be a stroker. That's correct. He is a stroker. Walter Ray, what he brings to the table is finesse and accuracy, and that's why he's won 33 times. And the last guy left is Chris Barnes. Attention, attention, Croker. Very good. Croker, half cranker, half stroker. Chris can do it all. He can play the deep inside angle. He can throw as straight as an arrow. Basically, what you have is a bully of base of bowling styles, different strokes for different folks. Well, as we check our Bayer PBA Greater Detroit brackets, Walter Ray got a kick out of that, right, Croker? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here we go in the wild card. Robert Smith up against Walter, who has had quite a record on TV so far this year. The wild card, of course, if you've been with us in the last month and a half or so, the best match play record that didn't qualify for the semis. He's going to work that crowd. <laughs> Robert doesn't leave anything in the bag when he lets go of it. Now the man that describes himself as the old guy falling apart. <laughs> bad knee, bad neck. Good rhythm. Nice shot. He got some revenge against fellow Hall of Famer Parker Bone in the round of 32, defeating Parker 3-2. and two. Of course, three weeks ago in Nashville, Parker swept Williams in the quickest match of the match. And then last night against Robert Smith. In search of PBA title number 34, he opens up with a double. And right away we're going to see the two completely different lines. Nice shot there from Walter. Walter playing a much straighter line. Robert Smith playing the deep inside angle. Both of them getting to the pocket early on. Robbed. 
that ball entered the pocket so hard it went right past the nine pin. See the deep inside angle. Now watch when the ball enters the pocket. It's going to go right by the nine pin. And that's because of the awesome power and revolutions that Robert Smith has. In his match last night, if you look at how Robert became the wild card, in his match against Walter Ray, he said, I gave him everything I had. I just couldn't get him. First three games of their four-game match, Robert averaged 241. But Williams, not having much of that, 255 average. Walter said he did get a lot of breaks, though, in, uh, in, in his route to getting here tonight. <laughs> Maximum Bob. Take a look from ground level. 579 rev rate. The average league bowler has around 250. That's where he creates all that power. That's a measurement, by the way, of rotations off the hand. Right? Rotation off the hand and his bowler, RPMs. What would your average league bowler rev rate be? I think the average league bowler is somewhere between 175 and 250. The average tour player, 375 to 400. Walter's wife, Paige, you got to see their house if you were with us last week in Grand Rapids, a little tour. I have a new summer job at Walter's house. I'm the new pool boy. Oh, oh what's this? What a break! Trip 479. It goes right back to what you said. He told us last night, he said he has had so many breaks this week, he said it's been stupid. His word, exactly, stupid. Exactly, Jim. Watch the tremendous break here. The head pin's going to go to the sidewall. Trips the 4-7. Four, four pin goes into the 9. Walter says, just another one of many I've gotten for the week. Strike, fair strike. Thank you very much. exception of that solid nine in the second frame, we've got a match that's all square. Unfortunately, that break that Robert didn't get, he's down by 20. Robert called his four-year-old daughter, Kayla, who is watching back in Simi Valley, California tonight, to tell his daughter he was going to be on TV. Daughter Kayla just laughed, said, no, Daddy, the only thing on TV are cartoons. <laughs> Don't try this at home. That's high octane stuff. You know, what makes Walter Ray so great is a lot of people would be intimidated by the awesome power of Robert Smith and Walter playing a completely different line. It's just, you know, ho hum. I'm going to go out here and play my game and make my shots. Hey, your stroker just had a five bagger there. The stroker's looking pretty good. <laughs> Walter playing right around the second arrow. Real direct line. Keeps his hand underneath it. Keeps the ball real straight, real in line. Keeping your hand underneath it will make the ball tumble end over end. If you rotate around the side like Robert Smith does, that's how you're able to get the ball to go to the right and then recover. Because the ball always tries to travel in direction of rotation. Which faces that time, Jimmy doesn't get the break. Thought the key, or at least one of the keys, would be boards 9, 10, 11 tonight, huh? Boards 9, 10, 11 is exactly the area that he's trying to play. And I would have thought, based off of the last shot that he threw on that lane, when he tripped the 4-7-9 up, that he would have made a small adjustment, moving his feet to the left or, or picking up his ball speed to hit the ball the line. So after five in a row, the sixth is open. It's the wild card match, looking for his 34th PBA title. Walter Ray Williams, Jr. against Robert Smith. The 27-year-old right-hander out of Simi Valley, California, Robert Smith, looking for his third PBA title. Take a look at these numbers from our computer-aided tracking system, which is down on the lanes. Notice the, the 500, 572, the 579. Compared to what Walter Ray's doing, there's a difference between a lot of hook and the straight line that Walter Ray's playing. More revolutions off your hand equals greater hook.
Pretty good footwork there. And speaking of, feet don't fail me now. Time for our feature, the Dexter footwork of the pros. This week, my Dexter solution was the number two heel with the number four sole. Uh, the approaches this week were wood, normal approaches. They seemed to be pretty well. So with my power game, it allowed me to get the nice plant that I need to create the leverage to get the ball through the front of the lane here to get the ball to read the back end instead of reading the front, which is what I do not need. Wow, what a break. That ball came back from nowhere. Come on. He uses that good footing to create all that leverage and all that power. Right in the pin deck, coming at you five in a row. Look at that pin get airborne. Take the 2-8 out. And he knows that was a great break. that down by 16. Big shot coming up to Walter right here on the left lane that he struggled on. Be interesting to see what kind of adjustment he makes. I would move in a little bit, give the ball just a little bit more room on that lane. Wow! David Duvall in action at the Buick Challenge. Seven. God, just a touch fast on that one. Heard Robert say that was a touch fast. Deep inside line, laying the ball down next to the left gutter. Watch how much room that ball covers down the lane. Said he wasn't going to be worried about what he would have to do. He was going to be worried about what he will do. What he just did there was a big mistake. Single pin spare miss. He had a commanding lead in the match. Although Walter was on a double, or is on a double rather, he just opened the door for Walter Ray Williams Jr. Robert Smith going at a 247 pace right now. Walter Ray, possible 263. Great match so far, Jim. Two hiccups, the solid nine, which wasn't his fault. It was a great great shot. Then leaving the ring in ten and then missing it in the eighth frame. Robert Smith could very easily have the front nine. Foundation frame, ninth frame. Walter Ray leads by six. Well, good, good and bad there. He gets the good break by tripping the four and only leaving the nine. However, he still left the nine pin. Easy spare for Walter. He won't, he won't miss this spare. Gets the good break by tripping the four, but nothing coming over to take care of the nine pin. Now an impossible 242. So after five in a row, open in the six, the double in seven and eight, and the spare in nine man with his own website and he would like to take issue with the folks that have written in on the website and ask why he doesn't like kids that's nuts he loves kids you should see how he interacts with my daughter my daughter just loves Walter Ray and he like get off it write somebody else yeah that's I mean that's total nonsense Walter loves children he's a great guy there is anything bad to say about anybody now Here's the situation. With a spare and a strike, Walter will shoot 231. That will force Robert Smith to get the first strike in the 10th to win the match. Robert's grandmother is watching Grandma Dell back there in Grants Pass, Oregon. If you don't know where that is, about 20 miles north of Medford, up Interstate 5 best wishes because she's a little under the weather right parts not feeling well best wishes to all right there you have it Walter Ray 231 here's the situation first strike in the tenth frame and reasonable count six spare Robert Smith advances if he doesn't get the first hit Walter Ray Williams jr. moves on Caleb 
back there in Simi Valley. Your dad is still in it. One shot away from advancing. Said this is the first week in a long time he's not been down on himself. I mean, things are starting to come together and results like this in a must-make situation. Well, you know, it always feels good when you make the shot you need to make under pressure and then the results are like that. Here's your winner. Go, baby. Come on. So he will advance as he looks for his third PBA crown. We'll check the Bayer brackets. Chris Barnes awaits. He's already won this year in Nashville. When we come back, Patrick Allen up against Jason Hurd. The Henry Ford Museum, Greenfield Village, the historical museum featuring ancient cars and shops located in nearby Dearborn, Michigan, where the original Model T Ford, and Mr. Ford created that empire, the headquarters not far from here in Taylor, Michigan, in the wild card match, each with a five-bagger there, but Hall of Famer Walter Ray Williams, Jr., losing out to the wild card, Robert Smith. You know, just before the match ended, while we were talking a little bit about the fact this is the first week, that Robert doesn't get down on himself. Things have been coming together in his personal life quite a bit. He said he knew he was going to make some bad shots, but he wasn't going to let him affect him at all, huh? Yeah, I, I really think the turning point in the match was in the ninth frame, or in the eighth frame, rather, when he did miss that ten pin. He rebounded immediately and, and threw, you know, struck out the ninth and tenth frame, which won the match for him. Well, it's time for our uh, pros approach. We'll get a little insight. Let's see who our partner here, Mr. Randy Peterson, has on tops and the uh, pros approach for us for tonight. Hi, we're here at the Kegel Training Center in Sebring, Florida. My guest today, Robert Smith. Today's tip's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more of like a demonstration. Robert possesses probably the most awesome strike ball the tour has ever seen and I guess the question on everybody's mind Robert is you know you play a part of the lane that most of us are completely unfamiliar with tell us why well you know what Randy the reason why I do play that part of the lane which is the deep inside line is because if I played where most people do I'd pick up the seven pin so what I'm trying to do is actually not just to stand left just because I throw the big hook but it gives me a better angle at my break point thus with the more head oil on the front, I can get it to the break point much easier. The steeper angle that I'm creating to get to the break point also creates a bigger entry angle into the pocket. The bigger entry angle creates a more powerful bowling ball, thus making the pins fly around much better. Wow, Robert, that, that was great. Uh, 525 on the cats. Um twice as much as I have, but you know, I think you can do better than that. I think you can get it up to 6, 650. Show me. You want to see it? Yeah. All right, here we go. Wow, Robert, 640 rev rate, but the ball went Brooklyn. Well, that's why the name of the game is still accuracy and control and not just raw power. Taken from Robert Smith, listen, he's a professional. Don't try this at home. I'm going to try it next week, and if I dislocate my shoulder doing it, I'll know who to thank. Right here. More with Robert next week on the Pros of Poach. When we come back, the left-hander, the tweener, Patrick Allen, up against the cranker, Jason Hurd, live from Detroit. The Greater Detroit Open, another grueling week of elimination and competition here. 149 strong, down to final five. And just like Agatha Christie's ten little Indians, five little Indians, now we're down to four. And up next, Jason Hurd. You want to see some revolutions and some RPM? Stick around. <laughs> this guy doesn't lack uh, in the power category. A big man, he's got a big, strong ball. Take a look at this. Jason kind of lulls you to sleep the way he goes to the approach, real, real kind of kind of nonchalant, kind of slow, and then right at the bottom of this one, he just rips the cover off of it. Our first look here at Patrick Allen. Great start for the trash talker out of Terrytown. He got into it last week, didn't he? Got into it with Schlegel last week. Makes this ball just a little bit high. Head pin comes off the wall, takes care of the nine. And that'll loosen you up. 
Patrick's a lot of fun to watch when he gets it going. Really animated on the lanes, lots of fun. Real intense guy. Off the lanes, he's just as laid back as can be. We were talking about one of the elimination matches last week when we were in Grand Rapids. Schlegel, Brooklyn born from uh, Terrytown, New York here. Patrick Allen, and they got into it. I mean, there was bait and switch. There was intimidation. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on in that match. The players talked about it. Uh, the rest of the week, it was uh, the big buzz going around the tournament. Take a look at how Jason got here. Defeated his tour roommate, Jason Couch, who was making his first match play appearance under the new format. Jason, still in line for maybe player of the year on the strength of a very strong effort earlier. He is uh, lamenting his hapless Washington Redskins back in Florida tonight, isn't he? <laughs> Still licking his wounds over the Redskins, although they did win on Sunday. What a whiner, Jason, and those <laughs> Redskins, huh? Jason, find a new team. And he hadn't had an over-under all year. That's been right. <laughs> Interesting to note real quick, Jason Hurd using two different balls. I'll tell you what else is a big key for Jason Hurd tonight, being back on a wood approach, right? Yes, yeah, he... He told us last night that he has trouble with the approaches a lot. He's a, he's a big man. He, he's got a lot of power, and footing is very important to him. And he struggles with that from week to week, but these wood approaches, these sliding yeah. perfect. Grew up on wooden approaches back in California. How about using a different ball on each left and right lane? Well, his reaction, obviously, is not as, is not as good on, on both lanes, or not the same on both lanes. Just take a look at his form here. Look at how that hand opens up at the bottom. It's like throwing a yo-yo. The faster you throw that hand open, the more revolutions you put on a bowling ball. Good look at Mop, one of Patrick's nicknames. I think it's in reference to mopping up opponents, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Had a real good summer in the region, didn't he? Yes, he did. Want some regionals in the summer? Worked on his timing. Worked on his release. Ball slick. Child time, no mistakes. Some self-talk there. Words of encouragement, good positive thoughts going through Patrick's head right now. Real focused on what he's trying to do, making good shots. 21 pin lead early on. Fourth frame. Four in a row. Said don't bowl scared, one of his keys to winning tonight. Get behind all the scenes for info on Patrick Allen and all the rest on the PBA Tour. Check out the Tour's official website at pba.com. The site featuring all the latest tournament results, stats, and stories. And as an added bonus, you can log on right now and chat live with 12-time PBA champion Dell Ballard Jr. Get his insights on tonight's championship action. Jason with a high confidence level, right? Said he's been knocking on the door the last couple of weeks. He's really been bowling well. And quick to note, Jason's using a much stronger left ball in the right lane. As opposed to the ball he's using on the left lane. However, that ball hooked a lot. Got that ball left, never projected to the right. And that's a result of the previous shot on that lane where he went light and left a two pin. What happens when you do that is the next shot on that lane, you're saying to yourself, well, I don't want to get it too far to the right. And the next thing you know, you cut it off and you miss left, and the result is missing uh, missing or going Brooklyn and almost missing the head to the left. Sounds like you on the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Hall of Famer Del Ballard Jr., Jason worked with Del, right, over the summer on softer hands. He's trying to take some of the hit out of, out of uh, Jason's release to get his ball to react a little bit smoother and a little truer to the tough lane condition.
format. He said it's do or die. What about Patrick Allen, the left-hander? How does he like the new format this year? I bowled a lot of amateur tournaments for a long time where it was one game match, lose or die. And uh, you, had to, you had to step up to the occasion or else you went home. And on, on the tour, now they have that format. And uh, I think people who grew up in that mentality where you had to win or go home have a little more of a mental edge against people who didn't have that to deal with for such a long time. Don't bowl scared. You never did. <laughs> you want to bet. <laughs> He's definitely not right now. Up by 41. Wow. Tack it on. Patrick Allen and Jason Hurd in our first semifinal match. Still to come, Chris Barnes, who won in Nashville against the wild card, Robert Smith. Welcome back live in Detroit, Michigan. The PBA Greater Detroit Open coming back to one of their favorite venues. Hall of Famer Pete Weber won here for the very first time in 85. Great gallery of champions. And why not? What about the conditions of the lanes? A lot of action tonight. Lane conditions with Randy. Take a look here at our house condition. In between these two lines in this area here, we have a very high concentration of oil. Over here to the sides, the lanes are very dry. What this does is it increases your margin for error, getting the ball into the pocket. You miss a little bit right, hits the dry boards, hooks back to the 1-3. Miss a little bit left, the ball lays in that oil a little longer before it hooks, still getting into the pocket. Sport condition, however, you don't have this luxury. Notice how flat the pattern is and very little dry boards to the right. Your direction going to the right, if it gets a little bit too firm, the ball's going to hang. Won't make the turn back to the pocket. You get a little slow going up the lane, that ball's really going to take off and go left, possibly missing the headband to the left. Point is, you got to make good shots, you got to be accurate. Speed control is a must. This week we bowled on wood. I shouldn't say we, I didn't bowl this week, but uh, the lane oil was 29 feet. That's from the foul line towards the pins, buff to 42. Real good surface here at Taylor Lanes. And that is a 4-9 split. Take a look here at uh, what Jason Hurd does at the point of release. His hand's broken back or inverted at the top right here. You can see how his wrist is broken back, which is something that I wouldn't teach. But at the bottom, look how he bends that elbow. That's where his power comes from. And what he's going to do at the bottom is that's just going to straighten out like a yo-yo effect or throwing a frisbee. <laughs> Unwinds his arm and his wrist at the bottom, and that's what creates all that power. Talk about him working on the softer hands with Del Ballard, and of course the softer hands means it lowers your rev rate, right? Lowers your rev rate and reduces the hook. Less RPMs off your hand, allows Jason to play the lanes a little bit straighter than he normally does, and also helps to get his ball to push to the right. Jason with a doubles title to his credit, but still that elusive singles title, it's very important to him to prove that he belongs. Well, he, he said that winning that first title would kind of get the monkey off his, or the first singles title, rather, would kind of get the monkey off of his back. Uh, he feels that uh, he really hasn't proved himself out here with the, with the doubles title. He, he wants to do it on his own. How about seven in a row? The only lefty in the field. Advantage? I think that it is, is a, it could be an advantage depending on what the lane conditions are like on his side. Take a look at his angle, somewhere between the first two, uh, first two arrows, 20 miles an hour with 237 rev rate as compared to a Robert Smith who's twice that high. And this is uh, what he's done, his ball speed obviously excellent, he's got front seven. First time on national TV he's taken it right to Jason Hurd. <laughs> Great shot, front seven, ringing seven, what a way to start, it's been a long time for this guy. Said he's come a long way in two years, right, a far cry from where he was. He really has, he's worked really hard on his game. You know, Jim, in getting back to the lane condition, with Patrick Allen, you know, he's the only guy on that side. If, if his shot holds up, if his reaction to the pocket holds up, I mean, there's only one guy for him to beat, and that's himself. Oh, 
unfortunately for Jason, he's having a little trouble getting the ball to enter the pocket the right way. He's not getting the breaks. He's le he leaves a 10 pin here, frame before last of the 4 9 on this lane. Well, he said he was going to be a little nervous tonight, a little weak in the knees, that the hands would be a little bit clammy, but uh, he is back and he's been working on his game and the results have paid off. Yeah, I think, you know, he takes this experience and, and uh, he uses it to kind of springboard him for the rest of the season. He said it'd be a step in the right direction. Obviously, his reaction tonight isn't what he had all week. And, you I know, surrender. the scariest thing about bowling on TV, especially for this kind of money, is when you don't have a ball reaction and your opponent starts with the front seven, that, that's a very lonely place to be. But he talked about the nerves last night to you and I. He said he had to take that extra breath. He'd be sweating a little bit. Yeah, you know, he, he, he told us what would happen if if he couldn't get the ball to the 1-3, and, and uh, it's pretty evident. I mean, <laughs> he's struggling to get the ball there. In the semifinal match, there's your winner, Patrick Allen. So he will advance to the championship against either Chris Barnes or Robert Smith. Robert the wild card, finally a little bit of a grin. For the man that loves all the New York teams, he was happy with the Yankee win, but he's also a Mets fan, loves the Knicks and the Rangers. You check the PBA brackets here. Chris Barnes, straight ahead. Back live, the PBA's Greater Detroit Open, 40,000 on the line for first, the final score in semifinal match number one. Still to come, of course, well, we've got Chris Barnes, who has already won earlier this year in Nashville. Now, I've got to ask you, do you play your opponent, or do you go against the lanes? Well, mostly the lanes, but you have to know what your opponent's shooting out there, too, and uh, you don't take chances if you're ahead in the match. I know also that you have seen a, a sports psychologist, not a psychiatrist, a psychologist, <laughs> and you've been very pleased with the results. Absolutely. You know, uh, uh, I think he's helped me out in a lot of different ways, and uh, it, it gives me a different perspective when I'm out here. Now, Linda is here tonight, and she's a great bowler on the ladies' tour as well, so I've got to ask Chris, if Linda's got one opinion and the psychologist has another opinion, hey, who wins? Well, you know what? I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I have two great perspectives, and uh, I can pick and choose what's the best answer for me, and uh, we'll try and use that today. After all the high-fiving in Nashville, I mean, you've got another shirt. Tell us about the uh, shirt here. Well, this is kind of the United Nations shirt here. Uh, this, we'll call this the Northern Alliance shirt. Well, there have been a lot of high-fives. I know you want to warm up. Best of luck in the semifinal Thanks, match, too. all right? He's already cashed $40,000 in uh, Nashville. There are some of the signs. Well, let's meet another member of the tour here who actually won right here at Taylor Lanes. The year was 1997. Ricky Ward. Ricky Ward. Drag racer. This is a Mockley drag strip. This is about 20 minutes from my house. I've been doing it for about four years. This is my truck, and I've spent a lot of hard-earned money to, to get it to this point. This is like the playground for power. This is what I do in my time off. Yeah. It's a fear factor. I feel like you come out here and deal with the pressures. It's like a stress release, and it helps me deal with the pressure on the tour. Ricky Ward, good racer, nice truck. He puts on a good show for the fans to, to do the wheel stand. And you can see the hole underneath of his truck because he's standing straight up in the air. Reggie Ward, a professional bowler. He'll keep it up on two wheels for at least 60 feet. When I'm out on tour, it's all about business. And when I'm out here, it's just a half fun. There's a point where it feels like somebody's kicking you in the chest and it's forcing you to the back of the seat. Oh, no. That's sweet. So I love bowling and I love drag racing and just a, a good marriage for me. Sunday, Sunday night, see Randy Peterson and Ricky Ward drive their monster trucks. Well, as we get ready for the semi-final match here, what about that seven-bagger by the left-hander? Yeah. 
Nice trip, trip they pin there. Patrick coming right out of the gate, showing great composure and concentration. Starts with the front seven. <laughs> Four pin go on the wall, taking care of the seven pin. Every shot looks the same. So when we come back to the second semifinal match, Robert Smith, Chris Barnes, live from Motown. So the wild card out of Simi Valley, California, the cranker, 27 years of age, Robert Smith, right there. Daughter Kayla watching, Grandma. Chris Barnes with a ton of fans wearing Chris Barnes look-alike shirts here. I mean, when he came out for the warm-up, this crowd went nuts. This was about 5 o'clock this afternoon, right? Look at him. Very popular. <laughs> Robert's like, hey, wait a minute. I'm still here. These guys uh, had a lot of competition in their amateur days and uh, bowled together on Team USA for a number of years. Looks familiar. Let's go. Let me call it his United Nations shirt. <laughs> That's some shirt. Recently moved to Dallas with his wife Linda. Exactly how he started the match in Nashville. Made an adjustment off of that shot and recovered nicely to come back and win that event. All right now, Chris had his warm ups, his warm up shots to figure out how he was going to play the lanes. And obviously, the thought going through his mind right now is maybe the decision I made is not the right one. And how he qualified to make it to the TV round once again through the round of 32, then the round of eight against Tony, and against everybody's favorite hockey goalie last night, 3-1. Mika Koivuniemi. Well, we talked about the recovery he made in Nashville a couple of weeks ago. And on that spare ball, he had so much velocity. Watch how close he comes to throwing himself over the line. <laughs> You're not going to get much closer without fouling. And the foul lights are on. Replacement refs in the NFL, that would have been a touchdown. <laughs> a double, Robert Smith. Asked him last night what winning would mean. He said, almost with moisture in his eyes. He said, I can't even begin to tell you. I mean, it's that important. Sometimes you want to win so much that you get so wrapped up in it, you just lose focus. One of the interesting things I think we should talk about with Robert Smith is his, his grip. He uses a grip called a Sarge Easter grip. That's where the middle finger goes into the first, the, uh, the first knuckle, and the ring finger is like a conventional grip. And a great shot there. And it, it actually cuts down on his hook. Adeline DiBiase, the proprietor of Taylor Lanes. They do a great job here. I mentioned a strong field of 149 returning here. Ticket was a tough item this week. There is not an empty seat in the house tonight. All right, nice little adjustment by Chris. You take a look at making the grade, the 98 PBA Rookie of the Year right there, and then what he did in 99, six finals, a couple of titles, and this year we talked about it in Nashville. He has been, as we said, working, and there is Linda, who has made the way from Dallas. They've been there about four months now, like the uh, grown-up airport, as they uh, told us last night. But he's been working with that psychologist to channel his intensity in the preliminaries, and it's really paid off. Yeah, well, you said use anger to, to uh, focus to focus on and, and get him going. And the problem with anger is you need something bad to happen before you can start to get focused. And he's just completely uh, changed his thinking and his mental approach to what he's doing. After open in the first, strikes in two, three, and four for Chris. Three in a row for Robert. Getting back to this Sarge Easter grip, it, it helps Robert uh, 
to create a cleaner release. And he actually rolls the ball. Down. Chewing on it right now. Come on! Come on! We'll take a look here overhead for where Robert is actually laying the ball down on the lane. His foot sliding in the left gutter, actually lofting it a little bit over the left gutter, the lay down area being like the fourth board on the left side. Four is fourth in a row. Nice adjustment for Chris Barnes after the big four in the first frame. It's game on now. This keeps up. You'll go to a psychologist. <laughs> hey, that could be that, that could be my that like could help. My, my comeback. Your wife would be happy. My career saver. Money for the kids. Christmas presents. Yeah, I think I need more than a psychologist. Twenty some twenty-five year old legs wouldn't hurt. Taking a look at what our amateurs did this week. Obviously, the sport condition, not something we're familiar with. Oh. It's the shaker four. Chris was looking for the break, tripping that four. This ball drifts a little bit high. Four pin gets nudged, but it doesn't go down. Changes, Chris changes to a ball that goes very straight. Made out of plastic, rolls it end over end. Straight line to single pin spares. Semi-final match number two into the finals. Patrick Allen, the left hand, 40,000 on the line, but we've got an emotional match live from Motown. This could be North Carolina against Duke, the way this crowd is tonight. I mean, they are whooping it up here in Detroit. Barnes and ESPN rules, you guessed. All right, the different way they're playing the two lanes. Well, take a look at where Robert Smith's sliding, number one. His slide foot's going to go right over here. Because he's sliding so far left, he actually has to loft the ball out in this area. If he were to set the ball down at the foul line, the ball would go into the left gutter. As opposed to where Chris Barnes is sliding, which is, you know, six to seven, eight boards right of that, his ball, he's laying it down right at the foul line. Now tell us straight where I was last night. You were over here. Thank you. But not bad, I might add. Yeah, nice form. And left-handed. Left-handed, too. You have an advantage. No, I'm just kidding. Difference in revs. And again, that's the measurement of rotations off the hand calculated in revolutions per minute or RPMs. The tremendous amount of lock, and Robert has to do that because of the amount of revolutions to keep the ball on line. The lock actually delays the hook. As the lane drives up in front of him, he has to move his feet and his target to the left. When he does that, he has to loft the ball because now he's so far left, he's running into the left gutter. Robert up by 33. Halfway there to 300. <laughs> last week they were on their feet in Grand Rapids. Pete Weber got right down to the last ball, 299. Roberts putting on a clinic with that awesome power. Chris Barnes now trailing by 43. Knows what he has to do. Got it in the switch zone. That's a little bit light. Catches enough of the head pin, mixes him up. Never know. Chris can strike out for possible 257. Robert Smith can strike out for 300. Right now going at a 250, 250 plus pace. Right here, 
cuts the margin to 33. Making great shots, the exception of the one in the first frame. You know, you see the smile there? He told us last night he's enjoying the shows more, and that's the psychologist. Well, yeah, you know, he's, he's staying with the, within himself. He's not getting upset. He's not getting angry. And he's going out, and he's doing what he can, you know, what he has to do. He's making good shots. Right now, it's just a matter of knocking them all down. He trips that four pin in the sixth frame. He's got, you know, seven in a row. For his eighth in a row. Oh! That's something you're not going to see a whole lot. That ball got in the Swiss zone and left a squishing four pin. Normally, that's the hit that you leave when the ball goes high. That ball was light in the pocket. Take a look at this, this pin action. The pins got moved around so fast, completely missed the four pin. Yes, and in the week, it is Cal Kirk Pilon's house. Pilon, if you were with us on our PBA series on ESPN, won in Peoria earlier this year. Says of Kurt, they call him the sleep monster, and he was trying not to emulate his uh, housemate, right? <laughs> yeah, for, uh, rumor has it, uh, Kurt likes to sleep a lot. Um, and uh, evidently, Robert uh, did a lot more practicing, practicing this week than sleeping. And you know what he did today to get ready? Got a haircut, wanted to look pretty. <laughs> Making great shots, shot after shot. The ball is just flush in the one three. And this is what happens with revs and speed. Well, okay, never mind. You saw what happened with revs and speed. Okay, here you go. I mean, it's not even fair. That 16 pound ball against those pins with that much power, they don't stand a chance. Barnes in the ninth. That's three in a row. Carmen Salvino right there. I won a doubles tournament with Car with Carmen back in 1988 in Cheektowaga, New, New York, just outside of Buffalo. He gave me a bear hug after the match, just about cracked all the ribs in my back. PBA PBA Charter member there, and what a finish here. After opening the six, that's four in a row for Chris Barnes. Well, here's the situation. Chris strikes out for 257. Robert Smith going at a 259 pace. Two more strikes in the 10th frame. Chris will force Robert Smith to, to mark in the 10th and nine spare on his fill. Nine spare nine, Robert would be the winner. No, I'm sorry, that would be a tie. Nine spare, no, that would be a winner. Nine spare nine, 258, 257. I'll get it right. Give me a, a little more time here. If you played roulette, you'd be like picking the little ball out if it landed in the wrong number, wouldn't you? I don't want that one. <laughs> Give me this one. Great shot again. Chris is having some fun now. He, he knows the situation. You just never know. But that shot there was very important because it forces Robert to get the mark. Nice. You can bet she knows the situation. Great bowler in her own right. Well, 255 still forces Robert Smith to mark. Mark and seven. Mark and seven, Robert Smith. Close in the championship match against Patrick Allen. Anything less, Chris Barnes moves, moves on and goes for a second title in second title in four weeks. Short approach, but that Sarge Easter grip generates an awful lot of power. He's so far left, he's standing in front of the ball return. Chris Barnes picks up a check of $10,000. Robert Smith with a strike here. He'll shoot 279. Hey, look at 
look at the scores last week. Look how close Pete Weber came. Look at the scores again tonight. I mean, the scoring the last couple of weeks has been stupendous. 279 here to 255 in our semifinal match. One more game. So, a quick look at the Bayer brackets now in the championship with 40,000 on the line when we come back live to Detroit. The left-hander, the right-hander, Robert Smith. I'm the left-hander from Terrytown, New York. Robert Smith, the right-hander from Simi Valley, California. Two dramatically different styles, and what a championship match. We are back live at the PBA $200,000 Greater Detroit Open. Glad you're on board. Upcoming. Hey, we'll be there next week, North Brunswick, New Jersey. Randy and I, and we talked to Johnny Petraglia, the Hall of Famer, earlier today. There are some, some Pro-Am spots. So if you'd like to take a shot, well, give Johnny a call over there in North Brunswick. Regional action. We'll take a look at all the regional action hap happening around the country. The stepping stone of the PBA Tour. Marshall Bowl in Marshall, Minnesota, late October. Burr. Burr. Town and Country Lanes in Kaiser, Oregon. If you put them head to head in their first matches, Patrick and Robert, be, be a nice match to watch. Both of them starting with the front seven. Let's see if they can do it for the in the title match for forty thousand dollars. Robert looking for his third PBA crown, just twenty-seven years of age. He was the wild card. Uh oh. All right, restart, deep breath. Somebody caught his eye in the stands. That won't bother this guy, he's too focused, he's making great shots, he knows what he needs to do. And of course, right again. <laughs> it might be a night of destiny for this 27 year old. Small and great. Check out the deep inside line. Watch the hand that rotates around the ball. That's, that's what creates all the power. The ball just sets up perfectly in the 1-3. Maybe some uh, early jitters. It's a lot of money Patrick Allen's bowling for. It'll be his first victory. Talked to us last night about not getting scared, not getting intimidated, but the key really, the first two short steps, that dictates how smooth the delivery is. Sets up his timing. He also said that he has some things to prove to some people back home. Take a look at this shot here, Patrick Allen playing the straighter line. Ball goes to the side, the head pin goes to the sidewalk, comes crashing. We call that a bird dog. Yeah, we uh, talked to him about the supporters back home, but also the doubters. And I said, if you could look right into the camera and talk to those doubters to try to disprove what they've been saying about you, what would you say? You'd go, that's for you, Hoss. Yeah. That's for you, Hoss. Yeah, Hoss. Yo, Mop. <laughs> Well, we got Mop, and then we have Maximum Bob, or Kong Cable, as in King Kong, and cabling means he's really, really putting the stuff to the bowling ball. There he is standing in front of the ball return. Has to alter his approach. Well, we talked about last week in Grand Rapids, so close with the 299 by Pete Weber. Pete Weber said to Robert, I'm the best bowler out here, but Robert, you're better than me. Robert said he was shocked, but it was like a two-by-four hitting him right between the eyes when Pete Weber told him that. I mean, that's quite a compliment. Yeah, it really is. Coming from a guy like Pete Weber to tell you, tell Robert Smith something like that. Well, we talked to Robert earlier about uh, the emotion of the championship. I'm pretty much the kind of person that you are in control of everything that you do. Uh, if you have good breaks, you did them. If you had bad breaks, well, you did them. I mean, it's just, 
I, I, there's kind of a fate deal to it, but not really. I just kind of feel like that I'm in control of everything I do. I want to be in control of everything I do. So uh, there's no uh, questions and no excuses to why things go my way or don't go my way. Patrick Allen with a strike in the first and in the second. Robert struck in the first, spare in the second, and a strike in the third. Joe Mock, this guy is focused. He's making great shots. He's getting the ball to the one-two pocket. He's got a great line. He, he's duplicating. He's doing exactly what he said he wanted to do. And he's proven something not only to himself, but the people back home. He talked to us about being a streaky bowler. He gets on a good streak, and he said when he's on a bad streak, you just literally can't get out of your own way. Well, you know, and he's been bowling well the last four weeks. He, he's been close to making the telecast. He's made it into the round of 16, in the round of, of eight. Just hasn't gotten over the hump and gotten on the show. And right now, he's taking it right to Robert Smith. We're going to take a look at an overview where Patch Gallon's playing. He's going to be laying the ball down about right here, which is actually further right than where Robert Smith is laying it down. This guy's left-handed. Robert Smith is right-handed. Take a look at this loft. Down by 30. Get some help. We'll see what's happening now is Robert Smith is running out of room on the right lane. He's got to stand in front of the bar return. He's got to loft it over the left gutter cap, and, and his ball is burning up. In other words, it's losing energy too early. And therefore, it's affecting his carry. He went strike on the left because he can stand further left on that lane. He's got plenty of room on the approach. On the right lane, he doesn't have that, that luxury because of the bar return being on the lane. There was another guy last night in qualifying that was standing there, right, and having a little trouble. That would be our statistician, Paul Kaler. He's got all the, pro all the approach and all the room that he needs on the left lane. And obviously a better result. Come on. Well, it's a little past six out there in Simi Valley where his daughter, his four-year-old daughter Kayla, is watching and rooting for Dad. A little amazed that there are not cartoons on. <laughs> she has a beautiful little girl. And, yeah, she's probably sitting Dad, why isn't Daddy in, in color? For his fifth in a row here now for the left-hander. You know, for all that trash talking he did last week in Grand Rapids, right? Up against Ernie Schlegel, he's being rather timid tonight. Yeah, but trust me, it's coming. I mean, we get down into the 8th, ninth, 10th frame, Patrick Allen needs a hit to win his first title. You'll see it. Right now, five-bagger working up by 40. Sixth frame. the bad break of leaving the solid eight. It looked like the pin was going to come over and take it out. It goes right in front of the eight pin. This ball's perfectly flush in the pocket. Here it comes right in front of it. Chess misses taking out the eight. So will Patrick Allen win for the very first time on the PBA Tour? He's got seven regional titles, but the first time at the big dance and 40,000 on the line. Back live at the Greater Detroit Open. I mentioned Pete Weber won the inaugural. Ricky Ward, our player profile, won in 97. Before that, Brian Voss, Parker Bone, Norm Duke, Galleria champions. 16th time the PBA has rolled here to Taylor Lanes, and what a job they do. Nice, uh, nice break there, getting the, the uh, bird dog. Patrick Allen after that settles in and just starts flushing every shot. This is what makes these guys so good. They repeat. Every shot looks the same. Starts with a five-bagger.
Take a look at what Robert Smith does. Now, remember in uh, his interview, he said he had that power, but he also learned how to control it. Look how consistent his speed is. But take a look at this. On the right lane, he has to stand in front of the bar return. His approach is shorter. His laydown is much further left than it is on the, on the, on the left lane. He's got to delay the hook Did you somehow. see Carmen's reaction over his shoulder? He had both his hands up on his temple in disbelief. There, there's not a lot of guys that can do this on the turbo. Watch this ball get everywhere. This is loft. Just incredible. Strong this young man is. PBA Hall of Famer Carmen Salvino there. Starting to feel it now. That one strike on the right lane might, might be the, uh, the jump start that he needs to start stringing strikes. How about the British Open champion David Duvall leading the field at the Buick Challenge, trying to defend his title successfully. David in action, 3 o'clock Eastern time. The entire field, 3 o'clock Eastern on Friday, Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern, the Buick Challenge. Yes, sir. Sometimes. I'm sorry, Jim, go ahead. Destiny. Two breaks like that in the same game. He gets the scout twice in the same lane. Head pin goes to the sidewall, comes hunting for the seven pin. Just a terrific break. Patrick up by 19. <sighs> Robert yeah. Smith going at a 260, excuse me, Jim. Robert Smith going at a 260 pace. Patrick Allen, 279. the heavy breathing there. That lump in the throat. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Brother. Hey, did you feel that? Was that a momentum swing? Okay, well maybe not yet. Patrick Allen's still striking, but take a look at what Robert Smith is gonna do on this right lane. About as far left as he can possibly stand on the right lane. And watch the hang time on this shot. Well, unfortunately, that, that time the ball went too far down the lane before it grabbed. Coming in way late, leaving the 2 4 8 10. This ball just never grips the lane. Do you take a risk at all when you throw it out that far? Well, that, that's one of the risks. I think the other risk, though, is that, you know, he's throwing the ball two different ways. Really lofting it on the right lane. Throwing it his regular way on the left lane, standing in front of the bar turn on the right lane, standing where he normally stands on the left lane. It's two completely different shots, and it's hard to repeat this. And almost makes it. <laughs> look at the look. Whoa! <laughs> well, that, that's not the way you'd shoot that uh, or make that split. And he almost got a great break at the two pin that bounce off the sidewall and take the 10 out. And again, you see what happens sometimes. You, you live by the door. You live by the sword. You die by the sword. Throw the ball. Robert saying, "Don't you know how to throw the ball?" He knows how to throw the ball, but that wasn't a very good shot. And you see what happens. The designs that are left by that big hook ball. Unbelievable is what he just said. There you go. Shooter. But the wild card has done very well. Worst he'll do is 20,000 per second. This one's yours, buddy. Enjoy it. Take a look at this split conversion. Slides a three into the four. The ball takes out the 610. Such a class there, there by Robert Smith. He said, it's all yours, Patrick. Enjoy the moment. Robert's a class act. He knows what it means to somebody like Patrick Allen to win his first title. 
Tell you what, though, for second, 20000 purses up 140%. Yes, I, the money Thank fantastic. You. Obviously, forty grand in Patrick Allen's pocket. Twenty to Robert Smith, the runner-up. And that's that. Uh, that's not going to be a spare. Once the guy enters the uh, the channel, it's uh, it's a dead ball. I really thought that that we'd get more reaction out of uh, Patrick Allen being his first title. The only thing I, that I can come up with is that he was so focused and so tunneled in as far as what he's trying to do. He was so focused that. He never let his emotions get, get uh, come into play or, or become involved in what he's doing. Come on. You go back there, boy, man. You go back believe half days, man. You too. You're going to teach me how to walk it like that, bro. Well, you're going to teach me how to play straight. That's <laughs> it. Who wants to eat big lofts? <laughs> It's amazing. Clinics by Robert Smith will occur next week North Brunswick, New Jersey at the Johnny Petraglia Open. Hope you'll join us there. Do not attempt that at home, but do consult your PBA professional. Yes, that is a 16-pound ball, not a 10-pound ball. You got it, buddy. After seven regional titles, his first PBA Tour win here at Taylor Lane. I see you, New York. And they're on their feet at Taylor Main Lanes. They love the bowling here. I mean, it's a standing room only crowd, and the first time winner gets a well deserved standing O. We'll talk to him when we come back live. And the final score Patrick Allen wins for the first time. The wild card advances, and Robert picks up a nice check for. $20,000. Let's first of all talk to the man that was the wild card. I know you were feeding off of the emotion all night long. What was it like for you tonight? Oh, it was unbelievable. I'll tell you what, the crowd here is absolutely amazing. I had a good buddy that I hadn't seen and played basketball with and who knows how long, and Danny, um, newfound friend here over here with Josh, and uh, just hope to let everybody know back home I gave it a good run, and Grandma, I hope you're feeling better because uh, I'm there for you. We talked about Grandma Dell watching back there in Oregon, all right, and your four-year-old Kayla's watching, too, instead of cartoons. Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I tell you what, my daughter, uh, she only thinks that cartoons show up on TV, so when I told her last night that I was on, she thought it was funny. So, uh, <laughs> don't know. We'll see you next week in uh, North Brunswick, New Jersey, all right? Yeah. Let's swing over and talk to our first-time champion. You can breathe now. You can smile. It's hard. It's very hard to breathe. It doesn't seem like it's real. I asked you last night after you qualified what winning for the first time would mean to you, and you really couldn't put it into words last night, but try right now. Well, it, I mean, it's obviously great to win against the greatest bowlers in the world. I wasn't sure if I'd ever be able to do it, but a lot of people had faith in me, and some of the doubters, you know who they are at home. You just gave me more motivation to come out here and do it for you. I talked about that on TV. I said, look into the camera right there, and uh, whatever you want to say to those doubters, the uh, floor is yours. How about that one, bro? <laughs> I, just try, I just tried to do it because you said I couldn't, and here I am, and there you are. You said one of the keys was to not go out and not bowl scared, right? You did exactly that, right? Well, it's hard to not bowl scared out here. It's the lights, the pressure, the PBA tour, ESPN. It's just, uh, it's just really hard to come out here and focus, but if you just try and just draw this little tunnel and just focus right in and try and block everything out. It makes everything a little bit easier. Is it okay to breathe now? Because about the seventh frame there, <laughs> that, that lump in the throat was getting pretty large. Yeah, I was trying to still be aggressive, but uh, I could feel it. I could feel it uh, it's getting a little tight there at the end, but uh, I was able to uh, able to pull it off. Robert, Robert bowled unbelievable. I've never seen anybody loft it like that in my entire life. And uh, it's just, it's an amazing thing to watch. It's We're happy for you. We'll see you next week at the uh, Johnny Petragli Open, okay? There's your first time winner, Patrick Allen. Don't forget the Johnny Petragli Open next week, live from New Brunswick as the PBA rolls on there. Next, Annika against Kari in Shell's wonderful world of golf. For Randy Peters and all our PBA ESPN team, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Thank mm -hmm. you.